Have you been looking for a way to stay focused on your goals and grow your MSP? Accountability groups from Rocket MSP can help. We offer weekly accountability sessions that meet online with a group of your peers. Your success begins with accountability. Go to www.rocketmsp.io to join your accountability group today. All right, guys. Good afternoon. I almost said morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Steve Taylor, host of MSP Webinars here. I'm joined by Jeff Hardy, who is currently on my left, which I don't know which which one it is because, you know, cameras always get flip-flopped. Um, so, so here's the rundown. Today we're going to talk about MSP Manager. It is a PSA by SolarWinds. And if you guys have questions about it, you are welcome to pop into the ask a question area and start asking questions now. And if there's a question that you see in there already that you like, you can actually vote for those questions. And I will vote for the highest rated question. Um, I'm sorry. We'll ask the highest voted questions uh, first. Okay. So feel free to hop in there and do that. Now, just so you all know, uh, coming up next week, we have a Kaseya Tech Talk. Sorry, Jeff, please don't be mad. Um, but we are doing that on Tuesday. It's not our normal Thursday, so people won't even know, right? That's um, exactly it. <laughs> uh, Thursday, we've got our monthly roundtable mastermind group. And <clears throat> a week from Thursday, we have Tech Reputation coming on. So those are the next three webinars that we have happening after this one here. And without further ado, I would love to pass it on to Jeff Hardy from SolarWinds. Jeff, could you tell us uh, what exactly is your role over at, at SolarWinds? Sure. So uh, currently I'm a sales engineer for um, the SolarWinds MSP solution. I've I've been here a while, so I've held uh, and had many hats. So uh, pretty much if we have a product, I was probably either a, an executive or an engineer for it. So, but, um, yep, go ahead. No, I, I was just saying excellent. Yeah. Um, so sales engineer, that means you're like an expert at the software then, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll say that. Absolutely. i have uh, quite knowledgeable for sure. Perfect. Um, I've already got people leaving comments. Uh oh. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Um, hopefully they hopefully like me. If they don't, then uh, then then they were planted by you. I'm just kidding. If you know what, <laughs> if if they don't like you, they can just deal with it because it's you. This is your show for the next sixty to 100, 120 minutes. Okay. okay. So they can Fantastic. just deal with it. All right. Well, you uh, you guys are ready to get started, or what do you think? I, I say let's get started. I see you've got your screen shared here, and uh, I'm going to focus on that screen. Okay, great. So feel free to get started, yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, everyone. Well, uh, thank you for joining us today. So uh, uh, they wanted us to do a little bit of a talk or speak on the MSP Manager solution uh, through SolarWinds uh, MSP. So. I wanted to start out just a little bit to kind of give you a background of where the product had come from. So initially, uh, the product itself uh, was called Capture, and it was its standalone, its own product on its own uh, started because an MSP said, you know what, I don't like the products out there. And he decided that, hey, you know what, we're going to create our own product. And uh, within like six months or so, uh, uh, there was a company called uh, SolarWinds that said, hey, you know what, we need to get that product. So uh, they ended up bringing it into the portfolio. Well, uh, before that, uh, there was actually uh, Enable uh, was another product as well that was acquired uh, by SolarWinds. So it became SolarWinds Enable. And then they brought the capture solution into the fold there as well. And then they turned it into and named it MSP Manager. Now, as you already know, uh, if, if, you, uh, if you guys have been on the other side as far as uh, using the, the Max solution or GFI Max uh, or, or Logic Now, Max, Max Focus, you know, there was a joke about what are we calling ourselves this year? Well, obviously, we were acquired by SolarWinds as well. 
and they had taken the the Max or Logic Now solutions, and they had also taken the Enable or the Incentral uh, products and all that good stuff, and they actually merged the two together, and they've called it SolarWinds MSP. So um, as a focus, the MSP manager solution is the uh, is the PSA ticketing solution that we're we're focusing on in this case. So. Um, I, I hope I'm not disrespectful to anyone that's on the call or on the line. So um, I do want to um, kind of start it out in regards to understanding why you'd have a product like this. Now, if it's if it's something that's super boring or if you guys just don't care or if you're like, I've been using this kind of product forever, get past that and just show me the good stuff, you know, definitely uh, uh, let Steve know and I'll just skip right on along. But um, understanding why you'd have a product like this in the first place is that, you know, being the value of being, say, reactive versus proactive. So um, as you already know, you've probably heard the term MSP, managed service provider. Now, it's it's quite common that that term is, I'm not going to say overused, but it may be a situation where everybody's more of a hybrid than they are a full MSP. Now, if you are a full MSP, awesome. You finally gotten to that point. But there's others that like to eat on a regular basis, and if somebody wants to give them money to do work, then they'd absolutely be able to and want to do that. But having the value of being proactive versus just the reactive uh, is kind of some of the things that we would talk about in this case, uh, and even some of those barriers and the benefits, and even having that integrate with, say, your SolarWinds, SolarWinds RMM solution or even the Ncentral solution. So it integrates with both products, so uh, just to let you know uh, on that particular front. So um, as far as the reactive, proactive, like what, what, what is reactive, what is proactive? So for example, let's just say that uh, the reactive side, well, basically something's broken. And at this point, now you're trying to repair that issue versus the proactive where their customer is, that is already paying you that money. And, and at this point, now you're actually being paid to keep it up and well. So when things are down, that's actually bad, right? So, um, for example, on the uh, the reactive side, you know, if if everything is an emergency, nothing is an emergency. And I'm not I'm not saying that that you're not doing a good job on your own, but there's a reason why products like this exist. For example, and the reason why is because, well, it says things fall through cracks. That is absolutely the case. That if you if you have not figured out a way to prioritize what it is that you're doing, that at that point, you know what, something could fall through the cracks. Something could be missed. And it's not that you're intentionally doing that. It's just that you get busy, you're multitasking, you're doing this, that, and the other all at once. And it's hard to prioritize what needs to be finished first, right? And again, that's normally that fixed, uh, that, that break fix hybrid style model. Um, but on the proactive side, on the other case, you know, it's a little less chaotic. It's a little more organized. It actually would help you keep technicians too. So think about if everything's on fire every day, how much do you, would you actually want to show up for work versus, hey, you know what? We already have the issues that, that are in, 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 in the particular situations that you have. But, you know, we are actually um, have our customers that we're doing our maybe our biweekly visits or monthly visits, or maybe you just do remote sessions for those guys and, and, and that kind of thing. So you can always keep things going all the time because their, their issues, or excuse me, their devices are actually in your, your remote management or monitoring solution. And then when there's issues that arise from there, you could actually bring that into, say, your ticketing if, if you're talking about the devices directly, because you and I both know that the customers are going to email you for sure uh, when they have issues. But being able to uh, use it on the proactive side, you can actually start writing out standard operating procedures. So therefore, when things are well, and, and then, this, then an, uh, an issue arises, at that point, they would be able to, or you'd be able to actually delegate that to, say, a technician, for example. And if you think about it, that would allow you to not be the one to solve everything. So you didn't create yourself a job. It's actually a business at that point. So... Um, being able to delegate that to your your uh, your technician would allow you to duplicate yourself. Which, uh, if you've ever heard of Jay Paul Getty, he, he says that I'd rather have one percent of a hundred people's efforts than a hundred percent of my own. Well, as far as uh, the proactive side, obviously for your customers, that would save you that time and energy as well, because well, they're they're not having to wonder about downtime and things of that nature. Then, of course, uh, having proactive monitoring that would allow you to be able to fix that before uh, beforehand, uh, that it would allow you to catch those things before they even become a problem in the first place. So if you have the right uh, checks and scripts uh, in place, that kind of thing, that, uh, again, it would allow you to um, keep the customer as uh, productive as possible. 
And then, of course, like I mentioned on your technician side, uh, remember, if you're waiting for something to break, not only are there, is everything on fire, um, if everything is on fire, that you'd have the ability to be able to take all of those issues and be able to manage those within that same ticketing solution that is integrated into that product. Um, and then, of course, as far as uh, the issues or the barriers, uh, one would be money. So, you know, it's not free. But if you can figure out a way to to basically make yourself more money by being more efficient with what you have. So that would be a possibility that you would want to be able to accomplish there. But you'll notice that, for example, uh, a, a post-it notes is actually a, a, not even a comedy thing. It's just it, sometimes that could be a situation that the way that you write down issues or even the email or spreadsheets. But, but more importantly, you'll notice that um, – that a lot of times those free tools are not quite as configurable. So uh, when you want to kind of upgrade to a, a solution that even integrates with your RM, and even if it doesn't, or even maybe you're not even ready for the RM solution, but uh, you'd have that ability to uh, still manage tickets from, from your customers. But as it mentions there, it says beware the bloatware. Uh, there are products that are excellent products out there, but sometimes they just have more than what you need. And if, if you're losing money by spending more than you should, then just think about that. Now, the, uh, the PSA side of that, just remember, you know, being able to manage your work and the time tracking, and of course, being able to schedule, and then of course, being able to bill. That's super important as well, because if you have problems and then you resolve them, how are you gonna get paid? Whether it be a break fix model or the proactive model, either way, the ticketing solution could allow you to be able to do that. Then of course, uh, being able to fix things as far as the actual uh, the issues that are going on in regards to what you re what you had mentioned to the customer at what the problem was. You've got the proper documentation, and then when it's actually time for them to pay, for example, you'd have written documentation as in what what the problem was, the steps that you completed to fix that, and 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 obviously at that point. Uh, assuming that they they approve the work in the first place, at that work at that point they would just basically pay you, right? All right, so um, what I just wanted to kind of throw that out there a little bit because I wasn't sure the gauge of the pure audience, if everyone had already used products like this before or if there's still uh, information gathering altogether. So I did want to kind of throw that out there. But so now I'm going to actually uh, flip directly over to uh, the MSP manager solution. Now, what's interesting is there's actually two versions of the product right now. So think of it like this, uh, just looking at the URL where it says APP. What this is referring to is uh, this is our current version of the MSP Manager solution. So, for example, if you went to the SolarWindsMSP.com website and you decided that you wanted to start up a trial, or maybe you're already using the trial, that's probably going to be the URL that you're using in this particular case, right? Well, um, you'll notice that, oh, I'm trying to click on something, come on back. Oh, there it was. It's hiding behind the other. Sorry. All right. So um, anyway, uh, so as you can see with the uh, the MSP Manager solution, there are the two URLs. The other one uh, is is basically if you're clicking on the Try Now solution here, this is our newest version. It's called NGP. So we're super excited about that. Now I will tell you that if there are any challenges that you may find in the new version, it's something that they're working on and addressing on just about a daily basis. So. Um, so basically, if you're looking for the normal or the regular version, definitely check it out here. But you can also log in with the same credentials here as well. And just think of it as like two doors to the same house, right? So uh, looking at the product in, in, in this particular scenario, you'll notice that uh, we have this ability to come in under what we call dashboards, for example. Think of this as your technician's dashboard. Right. So within the area here, this would give us the ability to look at tickets that are worked versus completed and even hours worked as well. And we'd have that ability to look at it from what it looks like, say, for today versus for this week versus for this month, even for the year uh, or some random custom time frame, if that's what you're trying to accomplish in this case. You'll also notice that there's an area called My Tickets. Now. This My Tickets area uh, is, think of it as you as the technician. Now, if you're a one-man shop, this may not be as valuable because the help desk area is going to look exactly the same because all the tickets are yours anyway, right? But uh, you, you'll notice that uh, within this view, you can see that we currently have timers running. So that means that you could possibly have two devices that are, say, at the same location that you're working on. And, and at that particular case, you'll actually uh, notice that uh, they're both running, and, and if you feel like that's not right, you can obviously do a pause on any point, uh, and maybe uh, maybe you have a phone call that comes about, and at that point, you can pause them and only work on the one that's of focus at that time, right? 
So then uh, there's also the ability to come in and uh, do filtering whatnot, uh, depending on what you're looking for in this case. But more importantly, there's also an area here called, yes. I'm so sorry to cut you off, but the ticket screen, can you, can you go back into that for me, please? Sure. Now, what, what resolution is your monitor? Um, I actually am not sure. Why is it small? Or... It's super tiny. I wasn't sure if you were on like a 4K. Oh, let's make it a little bigger. Does that help a bit or is that too much? No, that's good. Now it's too much. All right. Is that good? So <clears throat> a little better. Yeah. So okay. if, if I'm seeing this correctly, um, you've, you've got, there's a lot going on in this screen. So I'm just trying to sure. figure everything out. So on, on all of these, are these actual tickets? Yes. Okay. Yeah, each, each of these are say, tickets. And if you had timers currently running that you haven't completed the work, I mean, obviously, you don't have to have that many timers running at the time. Mm -hmm. But if you did, you could manage that from the dashboard or from the My Tickets area in this case. Um, so and, and people are saying it's blurry and... I don't think there's anything we can do about that, guys, because that is a bandwidth issue on Jeff's part. So I don't know if Jeff, maybe you want to turn off all those torrents you're running. And <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, I that's just how know, Sony uh, has their firewall set up. It's possible. Well, you know, I got Jurassic World. I figured I'd go ahead and get it today before it came out in theaters. So yeah. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Let me double check one more thing here. Sorry, guys. No problem. It's it's clear. It's clear enough for me to see what I'm looking at, and you know, so I can read check failed disk space check, yada yada yada. Okay. Seventy three point nine three hours. Is that how much time you've worked on this one? That is correct, and it's still currently running. Man, you uh, you guys aren't very good at this. <laughs> 73 <laughs> hours to fix a <laughs> yeah. hey well, you all know right, we gotta so... eat so uh, we're gonna charge for a lot of hours so. <laughs> all right okay. so back to being serious um yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right and then there i see there's a little drop down on the very right yes uh for any of those tickets if you wanted to go in and, and edit the ticket you could obviously double click or click on the hyperlink here as well but you could go in and add a time entry and expense, even add this to an appointment, for example. So maybe you need to go on site for that particular ticket that you could actually just jump into or add an appointment directly so that it puts in, in directly into your calendar. So it could be a situation where, um, where there's an issue that you started on remotely, but you've gotten to the point where all your remote tricks are done. You're going to have to just go on site and fix it, for example. And if that's the case, you could take you could take that ticket and maybe you have a couple other tickets as well that could jump directly into it or add those tickets directly to a calendar appointment that would create an iCal that sends directly to your email address so that you could lock that directly into your Outlook or G Suite. Okay, so it does not integrate with them, but you'll at least create an iCal for us. Correct. Yeah, it's not a two-way integration. It is a one-way out. Correct. Okay, so if if that appointment changes... So let's say the customer sends us a response that says, oh, you know what, Kim, instead of Wednesday, can we do this on Thursday? What happens? So um, what I would do in that particular case is all you'd have to do is actually go into your calendar directly uh, in MSP Manager, move it from, say, Tuesday to Wednesday. Like, for example, I don't want to feel like I'm jumping around just because of the call, but I do want to make sure that we address what I'm referring to. So, for example, if it's on Tuesday and Wednesday, so it's Thursday today. So this one was on Wednesday. Hey, we missed that one, for example. Maybe we need to put that one this afternoon. I can just grab that and drag it on down. It'll do the updates of the information. If there were any tickets attached, we'd see those down here as well. Just hit save. And what that'll do is actually send a new iCal out with an invite. And even uh, it'll send out, you know, with the orange line and italic. So it looks just like you just made an adjustment to an Outlook uh, I, uh, a calendar event. Does that make sense? You, you still there? Did I did I lose you guys? 
No, I'm so sorry. I no, nope. no, you're fine. Because I was coughing earlier, and then and then uh, oh. I had an ID ten T error. So, um, <laughs> gotcha. Does it actually delete or move or whatever the the calendar yes. entry on my calendar if I make this change? If, if you make the change from within MSP Manager, yes, it'll move that. And um, it'll update the old one to the new. So, uh, yes, because it uses the same information. Correct. And then now, is this also going to invite the contact on the ticket? So my customer, for example. Um, so when you actually create the calendar invite. So let me jump into what an, in, an invite looks like, for example. Uh, actually, no, let's do it from the ticket directly because that's where we were. So, for example, uh, we were looking at we'll just look at a ticket. It doesn't really matter which one. So, for example, if we were looking at the uh, device here, and if I go in to add an appointment, for example, I'd have that ability to come in, and obviously I could assign that to myself or one of my techs, right? Then there would also be the ability to come in and notify others. So it could be a situation where I've assigned that to my tech, and I'm actually going to come in and say, for example, notify myself, right? So I could notify myself, or I could even, I could have that ability to come in and uh, let me click save here and go and add one more thing to the ticket. Oh, it requires a ticket subject line. All right, so uh, give me just a That's second. Let's just, yeah, it is. Yeah, we kind of, especially if you're going to assign it, you might want to tell them what you're doing. <laughs> so uh, anyway, up here quickly and easily, uh, I'd have the ability to come in and add, say, for example, a location. And I can even add a technician or an employee of the company. So maybe I need to uh, meet up with them because they have the key to the server room or something. I don't know. It doesn't really matter what the reason is. But you'd have the ability to, like you said, notify them. Now, it's not going to add them to the calendar invite, but it will send them a notification of the appointment. Gotcha. But that's super simple to, to add their information. Uh, actually, let me get do it back over. And there's the one for work, right? So then I can come in to this particular one and I can add Mr. Testy there, right? So there you go. So now I send a notification to myself, one over to the uh, end user. And then if, if it's actually being assigned to another technician that I could see that right there as well. So it was scheduled for, so I could add it for Mr. Coffee here. Perfect. And just real quick, uh, for those of you that are joining us late, it is, uh, 122 ish on Thursday. We've got Jeff Hardy from SolarWinds showing off MSP Manager, the PSA that integrates with M Enable and MSP RMM. Mm -hmm. I was trying to Correct. remember its name. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, trust me, it's been a running gag with the customers uh, that uh, they're like asking about the name of the comp product. And I'm like, well, is your bill paid? And then you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. Uh, I know we're, we're going to have, we've already got 16 questions, but keep going through your presentation. Sure. And then what I think I'll do is um, I'm just going to have to ask all these questions at the end. So for those of you that um, have, have posted your questions early, I'm so sorry to make you wait, but. We're going to do right. it like this today. All right. Awesome. So, so anyway, uh, we were looking at it earlier from the uh, in the technician's perspective. Now, let's say that you want to look at this from, say, your the owner of the company's perspective, for example. And the great part is, is that again, like I mentioned, you can see this here. Then I could also come back in under the other side and look at the exact same product. So if anyone joined late, I'm referring to that. We currently have the, the released version of app.mspmanager.com now. And if anyone starts up a trial of that solution, you have the ability to click the try now button at the top. And it actually would bring up our new version where it says uh, it's basically two doors into the same house. So, so when I'm seeing two different uh, tabs here, it's the same product, the same login. It's just this is our newer version, and this is one that they're, they're basically advancing or enhancing uh, quite a bit right now. So uh, to, to, to look at what we were referring to as the user stats, so the word user in our terms is referring to the technician uh, or the login that is at the admin level, for example. And it doesn't necessarily have to have full administration, but more than just an end customer. So in this case, you'll notice that uh, if we go through it, we could actually find, say, there's this guy, Jeff Hardy. That guy's working hard, right? So you can see that for today, um, and matter of fact, again, uh, this works like it on both sides. And uh, you'll see in this case where we have, uh, have myself 
whether I'm looking at what I've done today, which I've done nothing apparently, but how have I worked for the week? And then of course, how I've worked for last week. And uh, now that you see the color schemes, there's three colors listed, there's the orange, green, and blue. So the orange refers to time entries that have been added to tickets that have not been closed. So, you know, that's important to know because you're leaving money on the table because, well, actually maybe you're leaving unhappy customers too because the, the ticket hasn't been completed yet. Then of course there's uh, green, which means it's time entries that have been added to a ticket. And then it, of course, uh, the ticket has been closed, but it hasn't been billed yet. So maybe it's a, a, a follow-up. What's going on? Why haven't we billed that yet? Or maybe the admin just hasn't ran, run billing until Friday or whatever. And then of course, blue means it's gone through all three. So when you see those colors, that's what we're referring to in this case. So you can look at that for the year, last month, this month. So I don't know, maybe you've built around some kind of, um, of enhancements for your employees that if they help bill out X amount of dollars, maybe you want to track that here if that's what you're looking for. So just another option. Uh, you'll see the service, utilize, service utilization area. Think of this as in the system, we have what they call service plans or agreements. And within those agreements, you'd have the ability to go through and add in, say for example, maybe the customer has prepaid for X amount of hours. And uh, if that's the case, you could come in and track that. And, uh, or maybe they're just an hourly customer. So at that point, you know, you just wanna make sure the rates are right. Are they using those? Or it could even be a situation where you have a, a money retainer where maybe the customer gives you X amount of dollars per month and you just deduct from that, depending on if it's a remote session or an on-site session, or if it's after hours emergency, you know, but basically what per hour rate are they charging? It could even be a situation where you have a managed versus a non-managed customer, again. So uh, you'd have the ability to go in and track that information and you can see if you're losing money, making money, how's that agreement going? Uh, you can even see how it worked. Uh, say for example, um, for the next billing period, if that's the case, the reason why this one's not uh, allowing me to go left or right, because it's you can see that it's a, in a year agreement and it hasn't gone through a full cycle yet. So if it were a monthly thing, you could go backwards also. Uh, user activity, uh, this is actually a great place to look in regards to the owners of, of companies. If they're, sorry techs, that uh, this would be the uh, place where they, they would be able to micromanage without micromanaging, right? So they'd be able to see the technician, what they've done. So like, hey, no activity, we might want to talk about that. Or what ticket are they working on? Is it the one that you expected them to? Are they doing what you asked them to do? That kind of thing. So simple things where you could just look at it and you wouldn't even necessarily have to ask. You'd already know. Then there's also the area up here, the top right. Uh, in, in the old version, it's called account settings. In the new version, it's just called settings. So you'll see that um, the new version is, is much, much faster in a lot of ways because they've worked on the speed. So if you've ever had anybody that used the APP version and they said how slow it was, they probably were not wrong, but it's mainly the reason why is because they were working so hard on the new one that they did not address the speed on the old as much. But, but anyway, uh, looking at it in this case, you can add in obvious things like a ticket mailbox. So it uses IMAP over SSL if you'd like, and it'll check for say unread emails every uh, minute or two, something to that effect. Then there's an option here that's called notifications. You'll notice where it says ticket request versus a ticket. So it's great to have the ticket request option. So for example, say an email address comes into your support box that is not a part of your current managed agreement, but now it's somehow or another triggered SLAs that are coming about and it makes you look bad. Well, you don't want that information to corrupt your data because that's important. So you can actually have things come in as what they would call a ticket request and simply put, it's an email address that you do not have a, a, a business relationship with, for example. So if that's the case, maybe it's a situation where you used your support ad email address to, uh, I don't know, maybe you, you got a discounted Groupon at Chili's or something, and now you're getting spam email, and you want that to be separate from your customers. So, And basically with those requests, you can have certain technicians receive those versus the actual tickets. So maybe with the, uh, the new tickets, you want those to go to uh, a couple of your frontline techs so that they can at least address that and acknowledge and communicate. And you can also obviously have the uh, external contact receive information as well. Then even when a, a ticket gets assigned, who needs to receive that? The most logical is the person it's assigned to, but if you want it to go to others, you can do that as well. Then even when a customer adds a response, how do you want to handle that? When a ticket gets marked as complete, maybe you want that to go to your internal uh, admin that does the billing. So uh, when that ticket is completed, time to bill as soon as it comes in. 
Then, of course, expiry items. Uh, think of this as simply put as whether you have Dell or HP boxes that uh, you're managing the warranty for, or maybe you want to manage your SSL certs or firewall warrant. It doesn't really matter what it is. I mean, heck, it could be a, a situation that um, you want to say that you take the trash out on Thursday. So you go ahead and set up a reminder or whatever that it tells you about that or something like that, right? So you, that, that could be an option if that's what you really want. You could do that as a, a scheduled ticket or in this manner. But you'll also notice in this case, we have uh, customer service items. Think of these, the agreements with your customers. Now there's one thing up here that some of our MSPs and IT companies love, the other ones hate it, but either way, it says that you can let it expire. Why would you do that? Well, bills increase, rates change, but if you never have a place where you can blame the system because you can do that. You can absolutely blame the system for the rates increasing or that the uh, agreement is expired. And at that point, you can get the ability to go pull some data and go, hey, you know what? This actually did make us money or maybe it didn't, that kind of thing, right? So you could go in and actually um, have those expire so you can have those conversations. Then you'll notice under the uh, portal area, you can have the an end user web portal that uh, your customers could go to log in and be able to uh, open up a ticket if maybe they don't have Outlook at their local uh, organization. Then you'll see even integrations as well. Uh, we do have integrations with uh, QuickBooks Online and Desktop and even Xero and of course even in Central and uh, the remote management solution and even uh, Service Desk, there's a migration option that's listed. Now, it's technically in beta right now. It is coming out in a few months or so. And the main reason why it's even listed there and available is if somebody wanted to move from Service Desk to the MSP Manager solution, that is an option if that's what they'd like to do. All right, so you can see here where we have the user management area. Uh, think of this as your technicians. So moving down the line, users, roles, access groups, very simply put, users is who can and cannot access the system. Because uh, within those roles, or excuse me, within those users, they could be you, they could be your technicians. It could even be if there's an internal IT staffer at one of the locations you're supporting that maybe you want to, uh, maybe this was your the company that you tried to pitch the full managed agreement and they weren't interested. And then maybe you, put, you pitched a partial managed agreement and they weren't interested. But then at that point you said, well, how are you managing, managing your tickets? And they say, well, you know, email, spreadsheets, post notes, whatever. Well, you could actually allow them to use the system at their location only. And then at that point, when they have issues that they cannot address, they can actually escalate those back to you guys. And since they're using your system, you've cornered the market and created another potential revenue stream, right? So uh, what you would do in that particular case is you could create a role for users. Then you'd have a role, uh, excuse me, users with roles. And within those roles, you'd be able to say what they can and cannot do. So for example, looking inside of... Uh, one of the roles in this case, say the administrator, right? So uh, that's the one that would be able to do everything, but it's quite customizable in regards to what you can do or not do. So if you want them to be able to create tickets, but not delete, if you want them to be able to run timesheet reports, but not anything to do with billing uh, or even customer management, you can create them, but don't delete them or even um, uh, user management. So you can add users or maybe you don't want them to add users because, well, that's how you, you're built upon or that's how your invoice is based upon in this case. So you could actually allow them not to. Maybe they can edit current ones, but not create new ones. Then obviously billing, if it's someone that doesn't need to see the billing information, you can just go and uncheck that box real simply put. Then even the MSP manager, uh, the MSP company management. So if you just don't want them to see any of the back end settings, you'd have the ability to basically limit on that as well. Okay. Then of course the access groups. So um, roles are what you can and cannot do. Access groups are who you can and cannot do that for. So this could be a situation where you have access to everyone or it could be just the uh, customers from A through F. So maybe you've got a couple of techs and you split them up by alphabet. Or maybe there's a situation like we were talking about just a minute ago that you've allowed the internal tech for a company to actually have full access. Well, all you'd have to do is just come in and create an access group that only involved say one customer Right. So at that point, when you attached it or, or applied it, that it would only uh, have one customer uh, applicable and available for them to be able to see. Then there's the billing area. Uh, I actually love the way that they've done this because in the past, it used to be a situation where you'd have to create an agreement for every single customer. And uh, maybe there was a situation where where 
you had some customers that actually have the same agreement. So you've, you, you're working hard on the business and you started to figure out that, hey, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't offer every single customer a completely different agreement because I'm spending so much time billing that I'm not making as much money. Even if you're, I mean, even if you're not actually spending the extra money, you're not saving the time. But, but what if I could tell you that in this particular scenario, you could go into your rate templates, for example, add in all the agreements that you have, You'd even have the ability to do a drop down and select your managed, uh, your mapped items from your QuickBooks online or desktop solution, and basically put in your your after hours, your on right on site rate, your remote hours, all that good stuff. So I have all of those added in, and then what you could do from there is actually go to the service plans area, and go in and add in service plans. So for example, you have options like flat fee, hour retainer, hourly money retainer, and even project. So say for example, flat fee would be as simple as if you've worked out an all-you-can-eat agreement with a customer, that this is how you could bill for that. Or it could even be a situation where maybe you bill per server or per workstation. And this is actually where that would tie in with the RM solution that you're using, whether it be in Central or with SolarWinds RMM, for example, that uh, it would be able to bill per device, uh, say it's every workstation or every uh, server. So like, for example, let's say we left that at flat fee, and we'll just call this one... Uh, Maybe we just call it server, for example, right? And I can come in and say we bill that per monthly, and maybe it's a uh, hundred and fifty dollars a month, right? Then we say use asset count. But here's the trick: we can actually click the radio button here, and actually instead of making it all assets, for example, we only bill those against servers, right? Uh, there's also a scenario that maybe it's not called server, but maybe it's called workstation AV, and maybe it's not monthly. Maybe we bill that on a yearly basis. And instead of those being servers, maybe it's workstations. But the trick is, is that because we've added tags to, to devices or the ability to add tags, you could actually add the tag to a device, for example, and maybe you only bill for AV. So what you could do there is, let's say you have a customer that has, say, 30 workstations, and maybe they have two spares that you keep as for asset tracking for purposes, but you don't actually actively manage those devices, and you don't put AV on them because, well, you don't want to spend the money on it for nothing. So you could actually set it up in this manner that it only build against the devices that had that AV tag. Okay. Then, of course, uh, there's options under where it says flat fee here. We have the hour retainer. That's kind of self-explanatory. If you have block hour agreements with customers, maybe they prepay for a few hours a month, you could have this set up so that you could deduct those hours from that agreement first. And then, of course, you could even add in overage rates. So obviously, once they run out of hours, you need to bill them uh, money unless there's some agreement or deal where you actually add in an, another uh, X amount of hours, for example. Then the hourly kind of self-explanatory there as well. That's your time and materials. Then even the money retainer we were talking about. Uh, where they would bill, you would bill against or, or ask for money and you can deduct directly depending on if it's an on-site or remote hour and then even project work. So you'd have the ability to come in under a project, for example, and just think of it as simple as something outside of scope so uh, that you could create a project with a project name and be able to attach tickets to it and uh, be able to manage that project, for example. Now, it's not full Gantt charts, but it does have some pretty cool features that we've added to the system, for example. So uh, See, let's just say, for example, that we did have a project, right, that uh, there's also an area in our system that is called task templates, okay? So if we went to the task templates area, let's just say you had a project of um, 0365 migration, right? Or maybe you're onboarding a, a new employee. So this could be borderline project or even standard operating procedures for a particular customer. And when you went into a ticket, so for example, we're looking at the help desk area, and we'll just look at a ticket, doesn't really matter which one. So you'll notice that when we go into that ticket, for example, that we'll be able to come up here in the top right hand corner. And there's one option here called ticket tasks. I could come in and I could add in tickets. And if I, as I complete things, you'll notice that the little uh, things check off, plus they're even added directly to tickets. So what you could do, for example, is you could create a ticket, apply it to the project, and maybe you have multiple tickets that are tied to that project. So therefore, it could just be outside of scope. All right, so I'm going to jump back over to the settings area. So we were looking at that just a minute ago, uh, where we were looking at uh, the billing area. 
and then service plans. So within the service plans, uh, uh, you, what you would do now is actually take those plans or those agreements. And when you hear the word service plan, think of service plan as at the MSP company level versus a service item, which is at the customer level only. So if you're ever creating an item, a service item for a customer, that means that it's probably a legacy customer that has an agreement that you wish you could take back. Everybody has at least one or two of those. It's the customers that they brought on back before their business was really up and going. So they gave somebody a sweetheart of a deal and they don't have the nerve to actually stop it, right? That's the toughest is to fire a customer and you don't want to, but you know what I'm talking about. So you'll see here where we have program levels that um, uh, basically under those program levels, think of these as your service offerings. So maybe this is the silver, gold, vibranium package that you've created for the customer, for example. And uh, now what you would basically do is go in and say, for example, we're adding a program level and we'll just call this one um, best or Steve, right? And then obviously description. Somebody asked me what the description was for. I said, well, I would assume that at some point you'd like to sell your business one day and hopefully for more money than you paid for it. If you didn't have any money to start, then you know what I mean. But basically the description in this case, this is a where you would put in your documentation because you know that's key. But putting in the documentation into your product and be able to say, hey, you know what, Mr. Person that wants to buy my, my company, here's exactly what this service is, this agreement here, and you can read that yourself. But you'll see here where uh, within that agreement, you can see the service plans. What you do once you've created those plans is you just come in and start attaching those to the agreement that it applies to. So maybe they have uh, some, some backup, right? Because you could have a backup tag that only backs up. Maybe you have a, uh, maybe you have a Hyper-V host that has a few guests on it and you're backing those guests up from the host. Well, you're not billing them for all backup uh, for those servers, it's only for the host, right? So you could, you could put a tag on there as well. Maybe you're billing for AV. And again, just think about what you bill for. You could have these all as your offerings. And then at that point, it's as simple as going under the customer area and then just selecting who does it apply to. So maybe it's the brand new customer. So think of it as onboarding, scaling and onboarding. So you can start standardizing everything that you're doing and it propagates that information down as simple as me clicking save program level. That actually will propagate that information down. Now it could just be one customer here. It could be a hundred. So think about creating those hundred agreements over and over again, right? All right, so moving on, uh, that basically kind of explains how the billing part works as well. But you'll notice under the uh, templates here as well, we have the notifications. There's approximately 19 templates that you could go in and modify. So um, whether it be, uh, remember all of the notifications we were talking about earlier, not only you can receive or decide who receives them, but also what do they receive? So whether you want that to be in English uh, format, plain text, or even HTML, or maybe you don't speak English, or maybe your customer that you're supporting does not. There's all sorts of languages that you'd have the option. Uh, whether it be French or even Spanish or Portuguese or even Italian. So they're definitely uh, customized a little bit more there as well. And then now underneath it, here's where the actual text is or the HTML is. So you'll notice that um, if I click on edit here, if, uh, if you guys speak full HTML and ease, uh, you'd have the ability to come in and do modifications here. And if you're not sure what uh, options you have as far as variables, uh, you can click on this option at the top right hand cor corner and there's our variables and their types and even the values as well, okay? SLAs, uh, think of the SLAs as, uh, well, we talked about agreements. So you can actually attach agreements directly to your service plans. And uh, what you would do there, for example, is let's say that you have a uh, per server agreement and then a per workstation agreement. But you know you want your servers to be handled a little differently. So maybe your servers need to re be replied back within an hour, but your uh, workstations, it could be a 24-hour window. You can set up SLAs to trigger that type of information. And maybe it's a critical server, and maybe it's supposed to have been done yesterday. So it could be like an immediate type of scenario, right? Then even ticket routing rules. Uh, think of it as right now, they're a bit basic, and I'm just going to be honest with you on that. But I will tell you that they are absolutely working on this information. Now, um, from the ticket issue types, think of it as you could have things as simple as your remote management outage, right? And then maybe there are situations underneath it that you break those down by what kind of feature of the product that was having the issue. Or it could be a situation that um, maybe it's a hardware issue, maybe it's keyboard mouse, right? So there's all those kind of options. 
But then there's an option listed called user skills. So now what you could do is actually come in here and say, click on that where it says, well, Amanda is really great at, you know, the hardware keyboard. Now I know that sounds kind of corny, but you could see where we could make sure that those are rounded, say based on user skill. So maybe you have your admin and you want to make sure they don't ever receive a ticket. So you could just put zero in their name. Team configuration. I think this is self-explanatory as well, where we have a tier one, tier two, just things that you need as far as business-wise. Then queues. This is actually a new piece that they're building out. Uh, currently, well, before queues was not available, but they've actually added that in and they're working on building that into our workflows. Uh, so that is something that is coming as well. Uh, ticket routing rules. Uh, simply put, when you get an email, how do you want that to be routed? When, when something comes from the customer portal, how do you want that to be routed? Now, these are a bit basic, and the reason why is because the workflow and rules is actually something that they're working on right now. So, for example, say that um, say that you're using the other system, and maybe we want to add a rule. Just kind of give an example here. So, let's just say, for example, anytime you have an OS type of and equals, maybe it's, um, I don't know, we'll just say it's XP, right? Or maybe we even add another condition and say that if it's on, and maybe it just contains the abc.com domain, okay? So just think about different triggers you could create here um, in regards to. And it even could be a situation that maybe it's a ticket and you're basing it on the title that contains the word server down, right? So then you could actually handle that differently. Maybe you want that assigned to a particular technician or um, uh, yeah, you could basically just auto route it. So that's coming. So I don't know if anybody was looking for that kind of information, but it's absolutely on its way. Uh, Knowledge settings underneath the uh, ticket routing area. Uh, basically, uh, you can create different asset classes, whether you're building out you know, firewall switches, network routers, switch, uh, uh, servers, workstation, doesn't really matter. Whatever it is that the customer supports and you want to add that kind of class in, you can absolutely do that. Now, <laughs> I will tell you that when it, you integrate that with your, say, in central or with your remote management solution, that... Um, you'd have the ability to uh, have some of this auto-populate based on the devices that propagate or, or migrate into or, or, or integrate with the product, okay? And then of course, status, well, you can create something here if you want. Maybe you just wanna have a status of say active, right? And maybe that's default, okay? And then maybe you have another one that's, I don't know, uh, let's just say that we call it inactive, you know, it's not rocket surgery, no brain science, but but it's definitely uh, something that would make sense for you guys if that's what you wanted to do. And then you could obviously kind of modify that as well. All right, so um, coming up here to back to the top of the screen, you'll notice that we're looking at the customers. So um, whether we're trying to find a customer, so in this case, maybe I'm looking for the, the, the Chase Bank. So very simply put, click on that, gives me that information. If I needed to come in here and click edit, I'd have the ability to do so. And the reason why is because, well, for one, you'll notice that it has the words chase.com listed here. And the reason why is because, well, if, there's, if that particular customer that you're supporting, you can put their email domain in. So therefore, no matter how many employees they have, and it, even if it's someone that you do not have a current relationship with, that putting that domain in, for example, will auto route any ticket that comes from that do, chase.com do, domain that uh, it'll automatically associate itself back with the Chase Bank company, okay? Then you'll notice under here very quickly, uh, you will see the uh, contact information. You can add in customers, you can add in employees of those companies. You can even make someone a primary point of contact so that they're listed and available to be used as a response towards any ticket. So in this case, you'll see where we have in uh, Testy. Well, if I came in and I said, um, well, it helps when I click on the technician instead. You'll see where we have a primary point of contact so that that way they could be available for everyone in regards to responses to tickets. Because there are scenarios where somebody says, you know what, I need, a, I need to um, 
I need to actually email the uh, end customer that uh, actually opened the ticket, but I also need to send a, uh, another email or send that same email and copy in the owner of the company or something like that, right? Because they're going to have to approve it. So therefore, you could select them because they'd be available anywhere, no matter if they were listed as a part of the Synology or even the QNAP area, okay? Then as far as tickets wise, well, that's just broken down by this one customer alone. So um, you could break that down very quickly and easily. Then you'll see the, uh, the word projects here. Now, the word project in this is not even misleading. It's just a name that you can designate as such. So therefore you can uh, basically create a uh, service item or plan and be able to use that word project with it. So therefore uh, it just breaks it out of scope. Now, you'll see the words here, rates and service items. Don't be confused with the rate templates and service plans we looked at before. Basically, the word rates and service items in this case are talking about at the customer level. Now, the key is when we're looking at the rates or the service items, is that you'll notice that there's another source over here or a column for source under the service plan or service items. This, this column is actually referring to where did it come from? So think of it as like policies that you've applied to your customers. And if it's a, a part of multiple versus it's being created locally here, how was it applied? So you can see in this case, there's a little man with a circle around him. That's telling him it's a custom service item for this customer alone. But then separately, you'll see at the top here with a server standard flat fee that this one actually was created as a service plan that is attached to a program level. So again, it's all about your uh, looking at your agreements. And the great part about doing things as far as a program level and then adding those as a service plan is that when things change and update and modify in the future, it's not annoying to you, did I get them all? You do it at the top level. Again, it's like a policy. It propagates down, saves you so much time. So Jeff, <clears throat> yes. how, much, uh, how much more do you have to work through? Because we're at 50 minutes now. Um, I, I honestly, I, I, I'm really about done. I mean, it, do you okay. want to go ahead and knock out questions? We can do that. I, I do. Cause I want to make sure for the people that have to leave at the top sure. of the hour, we can, we can hopefully answer those. So guys go ahead and, uh, make sure you're checking out the Q and a section, ask a question on the bottom and vote for the questions. I'm going to ask them in the order of highest votes. Number one, can I process payments? from within MSP Manager? Unfortunately, not directly in the product. Uh, it would have to be an export to the integrations that we currently have, whether it be QuickBooks Online or Desktop or the Zero solution. Okay, fair enough. The QuickBooks integration, is it a real integration? Is it is it like a two-way sync with invoices and products? Um, so there are the two options that we have, one being uh, the QuickBooks Online, which is an API call. So uh, it does bring that information in. So for example, if I go to the settings area and then go to integrations, you'll notice that when I click configure, it, this is actually going to make a call back to say QuickBooks, for example, and update the, uh, the information. Now the desktop uh, is actually an SDK that is pulling that information, excuse me, is pushing that information out to uh, your QuickBooks uh, desktop account. So the online version is actually uh, integrated a little bit more in regards to that. The, uh, the desktop version just gives you a way to push that information out via the, um, the uh, QuickBooks web connector. Okay, excellent. Uh, next, are there any ways to track technician's time and report on it? Oh, where'd it go? Uh, not just export the data, but look at the data in a meaningful way to tell what their utilization was like. Hmm, that's a good question. Not only are you asking about the time, you're asking about their total time. Well, that's going to assume that we know how much time they've actually been employed or, or when they clock in. So it may be a situation where we actually would have to have them actually open up tickets on their own within their own company so that we know how long they worked that day versus how much time they entered. Does that make sense? Got it. So this isn't, this is not doing <clears throat> employee clock ins, clock outs, like one, one or two of the other PSAs can do. And it's not also, directly. No. And I know 
with um, I, you know, there's there's no reason to to tiptoe around this. I'm gonna name names, okay? Uh, sure. Autotask, I don't think does clock in, clock out, but what it does have is you can say here's the hours these employees work. Right. And you're also able to say here's what this employee costs me per hour, and you know, so between knowing that you know what their shift looks like and knowing what their their cost per hour is you're able to look at the billable non-billable and in scope of a contract and somehow figure out what their utilization looks like um and that's assuming that that particular uh employee was the main go-to for that particular customer or is it is that part not matter I would assume it's based on ticket. So if a ticket's opened for a customer, employee works on that ticket, then it would somehow, and and this part honestly is beyond me because um, as a one person MSP, I right. just don't care about that type of metric. However, sure. it you know I, I could see where somebody would want to understand not only is, and I, and I think it also goes to, is the employee profitable? Is the contract profitable? Was the ticket profitable? You know, that type of stuff. And trying to look at all of that data and tell you, you know, sure. yes or no. But obviously with data that you understand how to look at. Right, right. Well, well for example, under the company dashboard that we did have the ability to look at the user stats. So you could see how much money that they have, what, how much time or how much money they're going to bill, how much has been completed, that kind of information. Plus, you could see what is billable versus unbillable. Uh, also, uh, how much amount, how much they have billed, right? Then there was the other option where you can go into service utilization. I don't know if they've built a way as of yet for you to be able to cross that those two bits of data. So I can tell you if that technician is billing out money. I can tell you if that service uh, utilization, if it's quality work, are you over on the agreement? Do we need to renegotiate that kind of thing? So you can see, for example, there are 12 billable hours and they're at the 14 mark at this point. They've actually gone over by 17%. You see what I mean? So we can see if those agreements are good or not. Um, I might have to um, talk to a couple of more people on my side to see if, if there's anything in the works that would allow that to be kind of merge together so that not only could you see service utilization but you could see technician utilization against those services because that's kind of what they're looking for uh, i'll have to yep all right i'll um, have to check on that and he he put a follow-up and i'm not sure if we touched on it or not johnny feel free to, to add some more comments to this can it track and report technician productivity is that is that what you're going to look at the user stats correct yeah because okay. we wouldn't know how how productive they were until we know what they didn't do. Fair enough. Okay. Next question. Are there plans to bring automated workflows into MSP manager? I, I know that you started showing us some of the uh, workflows and things like that. How, how, how in depth do you see these automations becoming and is there an ETA on them? So um, I absolutely see that becoming quite uh, rather deep, to be honest with you, because uh, under the workflow and routing rules, uh, this is coming out fairly soon in regards to starting from the remote management side, for example. What they're doing is allowing you to be able to auto route tickets that are check failures from the RM dashboard. So one of the biggest pet peeves that we've ever had from uh, anyone that used a uh, PSA ticketing solution is being able to limit which issues are opened up as tickets, right? So, so being able to go in and filter that and be able to create rules that basically stop things from happening. So I don't know if there's any SolarWinds RMM customers on or trialists in the past. Uh, one of the most common things that I ever had them ask was say, for example, if it were a, um, say that when there's a ticket title that contains and say it's the words performance and there's performance monitoring if anybody's ever seen that before mm -hmm. basically saying that do not create ticket so you could you could replace that word performance with anything that doesn't matter to you 
in the RM dashboard. And there, that's phase one. And once, once they get that going, they're actually going to make phase two and allow that to be for any ticket that comes into the solution. So I'm super excited about that. Very cool. <clears throat> and I'm going to follow up on this. I actually have to find the question. Here it is. Can MSP Manager trigger any scripts or automations? So I would say this, this is where MSP Manager, uh, excuse me. Um, this is where MSP Manager would almost need to like work together with the RMM. And I would assume right. it would have to be in central at this point. No offense to MSP RMM. No, um, no problem. So can can it trigger scripts or automations through itself? So I know. Um, a yeah, big tell thing, me more. Sorry, what was that? I said, tell, tell me more because I don't even know if it would need to make it this far. So perfect example. Um Let's let's look at the ConnectWise stack. Okay. Um, if somebody went to my website and filled out a form and said, I want to sign up for Steve's awesome AV software product. Gotcha. I hear that's can, a good one. Can that form, uh, assuming they put their, their payment information in and all that kind of stuff, I would mm -hmm. want that form to create a customer in MSP Manager, create a customer okay. in N Central, create okay. the agent, send an email out using MSP Manager, because obviously N Central isn't going to send out notices to customers. Basically go through a whole list of almost like doing the basics of customer onboarding for us, like with what ConnectWise is able to do with tracks um, right. along with uh, their their manage and automate products, how, how the two of them can kind of work together. Right. Um, can it do that or something Currently. like it? Currently not yet. I was I was thinking you were going to go off of the uh, an alert came off of your dashboard, for example, and it triggered an email that before the email was triggered, I needed to run a task or two beforehand. But I could see why that would be a little different. Got it. Um, currently, no. But um, that's a good question. I'm actually going to ask that very question uh, to product management. Uh, somebody asked if pricing is covered. Um, one, one second. Let me convert that to a question. Start answering. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Um, I don't know if we should cover pricing or not because uh, I, I think it, would, it may be best if um, – would it be okay for just them to send me an email and I get them in touch with the proper rep representative? Is that okay? That That's fine. Can we, can we at least say is it – Competitive or comparable to the big two? It's competitive. I think it's about, I, I'm just going to, uh, it's around the $50 mark per technician. Okay. That that seems reasonable. And and obviously, you know, I, I think it's, just, it's safe to say with all of these products, you, you know, your mileage may vary as far as what kind of pricing you're able to achieve because maybe you have a huge company you sign a longer contract, you pay up front. There's all yep. sorts of reasons a price can change. So I, I think that's that's a fair response yeah. to the pricing. Yeah, and, and obviously, if you speak to a sales rep at that point, um, depending on if you talk to them at the end of the month, maybe they give you a great deal. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it looks like Matt's got it all together there. Yep. So how does MSP Manager deal with self-healing? So how does it deal with self-healing? Um, it seems like it would be so, more of, a, of an end central question to me. Well, I know what they're asking because, um, say, for example, I, I, unless I'm wrong, so when I bring this up, uh, the, the person that asked the question, for example, um, I'm assuming that you're referring to, say, there's a problem in the dashboard and it triggered a ticket and 
and then you wanted a script or some kind to run and actually it close itself. Is, is that what you're kind of referring to? I, th I, th I think, uh, uh, let's, let's look at it like this. Let's say the RMM triggers an issue. I would assume okay. it then creates a ticket. Yes. Yep. Um, Wow. Oh, and then the then the issue is resolved. Um, yeah, so it actually closes itself. Okay. Not a problem. And, and if it's using the Incentral solution, I believe that you can set it up to add, say, 15 minutes of time for the work that was completed, and then it uh, actually adds that back to the ticket. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. Next question. Does SolarWinds actually use MSP Manager to run its own business? <laughs> so funny that they asked that. Uh, unfortunately, no, um, because you wouldn't better find the bugs in your own system if you're using your own system because you wouldn't know it's a bug. Uh, no, we use another uh, solution for uh, management worldwide. Does it rhyme with males, pores? It does. It does. It yes, that is correct. <laughs> I thought right. you were going to say similar to uh, by not force something like that. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, are there any plans to add a CRM element to MSP Manager in the near future? And what is the ETA? Uh, they are planning on adding some more CRM type functionality into the product. Uh, I don't have an ETA for you, but uh, if I get the information for whoever that sent that, or I can at least send it back to you, Steve, and I'll, I'll definitely get you an answer. That sounds great. Uh, following up to his question, is there a roadmap available for this somewhere? Uh, not publicly, but I will tell you that uh, they will be discussing the roadmap at our Empower event in Scottsdale, Arizona in September. Very nice. IT Glue. When are you going to integrate? Uh, I don't have a time frame there. Uh, they do integrate directly with the um, the two uh, monitoring right. solutions that we have. But, yeah, um, I'll, I'll have to find out. Hopefully next week. <laughs> it's a fine product, I hear. When integrating with QuickBooks Online, is mm -hmm. there or will there be an option for the invoices to have the email field filled out and all payment options checked uh currently there is not but it's a good question because sometimes it's either the limitation of the sdk itself because i'm assuming that they have the desktop version it's possible they may have online i'm not sure but i always think of the desktop first but um basically uh the it's a limitation of either the sdk itself the or it's the limitation of the developers that created it from the SDK. So if they didn't add that information in to be pulled over, obviously it's not going to populate. So I, I don't have a good answer other than currently it does not. And uh, I'm not going to call it a feature request because I think that information should come in anyway. I just think it's probably, um, I would ask them if they haven't used it already to, or, or ask them to open a support ticket on that if they haven't already. Uh, can it pull locations from the RMM, or is that still manual? I'm sorry, say that again? Locations. Um, so I don't know if Johnny means, so for example, if, if I've already got these 30 customers in MSP RMM, mm -hmm. can it pull those customers into MSP Manager, or do I have to manually create them? From from QuickBooks, is that what you're referring to? And Central. Oh, or, it, or QuickBooks. Let's say both. I mean, why not? Right. Uh, all right. So, uh, best case scenario, uh, it should bring that information over or into from, say, uh, in Central and the RM product, and even, uh, uh, it, but not QuickBooks. It's not going to bring the company names in. But there are two CSVs that support can do the import for you. One of those being of customers, and the other one is locations and contacts. So. Um, so all you'd have to do is basically fill out the CSV, send it back to support, and they could actually uh, do that import of that information for you. 
Okay. So it integrates essentially between MSP manager and, 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 and central. Yes. Uh, to the point where if a customer exists in N central, it will exist in MSP manager because it's going to link the two together. Um, well, Correct. Now, it may be worst case scenario that it may be where you go in and select a drop down where you're mapping the two together, but uh, it will indeed connect the two. Perfect. And then with since we brought up the QuickBooks earlier, how does QuickBooks know who you're billing? So Is it just uh, it, a dumb sync where if if they're if they're already in QuickBooks, they need to have the exact same name, or is it a drop down? Yeah. Okay. It's it's actually a, it needs to have the same name, correct? So Johnny says no, you can link, but you cannot pull, going from N Central to MSP Manager. So okay. yep. to clear to clarify, if someone's in N Central and they don't yet exist in MSP Manager, I sign up with MSP Manager. Does it bring in the company name from N Central, or do I? Do I have to import that using the thing? You would have to do the import. Now, I will tell you on the SolarWinds RMM side of it, uh, that does automatically populate all that information. Uh, I was mistaken. I was thinking that they had the same functionality of the two integrations, but I apologize. Gotcha. How tight is the integration with the RMMs? IME dated August 2017. Uh, it was lacking with both Enable and LabTech. So as so far as... With LabTech still. What? what oh, MSP Manager? Yeah. Correct. It, it, it only has... Uh, the integrations that we have currently are the two RM platforms and obviously the QuickBooks and Zero for now. So is there... Um... Is there some kind of like sheet or brochure or something that shows like here is what integrates between N Central or MSP RMM and MSP Manager? And here's here's how they work together. Um, technically, no, but I can definitely get you something if that's if that's what someone's looking for. Okay. Um, what kind of business planning can I do with MSP Manager? Um, give me a little more on that. What are you looking for? That's a great question. Um, I'm going to wait for him to respond to that. Um, I imagine he's probably looking to figure out, uh, how to plan. Oh, he said historicals and projections. So it sounds like money. Okay. Um, hmm. Now, I know, first off, there's a resource center for the business side of it in general. So, for example, um, not even with the actual product itself, but it's a part of our entire SolarWinds MSP platform that it's not only good to know the products technically, but also to how to run a business as well. So they have a whole nother webinar series in regards to billing and uh, how to do everything that you we were just referring to. And he said that uh, now... To be fair, I, I, I am going to give you guys the benefit of the doubt because okay. he was a customer of yours a year ago. In this okay. Case, okay. So he did say that uh, the resource center is lacking. So. Hmm. Okay. Now they did just come out with a new, they did come out with a new webinar series that okay. just started pushing out within the last, say, three months. So um, I'm, I'm not going to say they're wrong because it's possible at the time. I didn't see it, but. I do know that they are definitely putting a focus on that. So, for example, um, uh, if you go to solarwindsmsp.com, and then under resources, MSP Institute, and they have business trainings now. So uh, these are on demand and videos, and then there's also additional information as well. So. And I think they've had, I think there's about 12 webinars that they put together, I think. Here, let's check. Wait, and, and I don't even have to log in to have access to this? Not these, no. No, these are, uh, yeah, these are initial uh, videos. Obviously, a deeper dive would be inside the resource center, but 
you know, we we want to make sure that our customers know that the information is available. So definitely. Fair enough. Uh, how much of a financial deep dive uh, can can MSP manager provide? Can can he track his category subcategory item? Um, so, for example, uh, it's not an inventory uh, management. So that's something that I actually want them to add. And and believe it or not, that is something that they are working on. It's creating what they call an inventory catalog so that you could do more management in regards to or possibly better integrations with products that rhyme with IT glue. Right. So um, let's see. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, uh, within the help desk area. Uh, there is a, a place not only for obviously time entries and, ex and appointments, but there's also the option for, say, expenses. Now, again, it's not an inventory uh, management necessarily, but it does allow you to map something back to a QuickBooks item so that you could at least tag it. So when you're making the invoice, you could go in uh, and, and reference the proper item. So. And... Um... He actually meant category, subcategory, item for tickets. Oh, sorry. So, no, it's okay. So, um, you know, if, if the ticket is a break fix regarding a monitor, mm -hmm. you know, that type of stuff. So are is he able to look at a financial deep dive of how how much – I bet the 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 question he's really looking for is, you know, how how much time are my tech spending on this type of ticket, so that way eventually he can look and figure out how can I automate this so they don't spend as much time. That's actually a really good question. I don't have a good answer for that one yet, but I'm going to ask. How much? So basically, how much time are we spending on a particular type of issue? Yeah. So and. You know, I'll, I'll I'll tell you this. This is a ConnectWise user, so sure. he you know he would want to see your product be ridiculously granular to to ever consider switching from them to you. Sure, I understand. Um, I mean, people would sli switch an RM platform in a heartbeat, but they're ticketing PSA. That is the business. So completely understand. And it would have to be at least a lateral transfer, if not better, for that to happen. So, nope, I'm I'm not stupid. I absolutely totally get it. So, hear hear that, Johnny? He's not stupid. <laughs> not completely. <laughs> only, only have a stupid Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we we already answered this one. So, current RMM integrations include the SolarWinds platforms, MSP RMM, and then Central. Currently Are you is. planning to open this up to third-party RMM tools? That is a good question. So, I was I was expecting the API question, but um, I, uh, that's a good question. I'm going to have to find that one out too. I've never been asked that before. Good question. Um, so, so nobody's ever asked you. Can I use MSP Manager with Kaseya? Unfortunately, no. Normally, it's the other way around. They want to know what. What does MSP Manager integrate with? And we answer the question, and yeah, they never ask more. So, um, okay. Now, now you said you thought it was the API question. Yeah, you, I was going to go. You, you threw go yourself ahead. under the bus, Jeff. Answer the no, API I, question. No, I'm answering that now. <laughs> so uh, we're actually adding in an API. See, I set you up. <laughs> so right. we added. Uh, we're actually adding in an API. Uh, we're going to be using OData to um, initially to use it for being able to pull information out for uh, basically using an integration of Power BI and OData to be able to create a customized dashboard. We're gonna call those workspaces so that you could customize, basically looking for what you're interested in. So uh, to answer uh, the earlier questions about productivity and whatnot, it's possible that the information is in the system, it just hasn't been pulled out properly yet. So if that's the case, it may be a situation where we may be able to create an interactive dashboard uh, where think of them as widgets that can be moved around on that workspace area that might be able to answer that question for you. So, um, yeah, that that's coming as well in the next uh, quarter. So, so with with these widgets and dashboards, I mean, would you, assuming we're talking about information coming from SolarWinds products, would you say that 
your your dashboard would be as good as something that maybe rhymes with bright gauge? It's very possible. Very possible. Okay. Uh, obviously, obviously, the initial release, we're not going to say that either. But the goal <laughs> would be, away. yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Um, our goal is to make a great product for our customers. So whatever that is, that's what we'll work towards. So, you know, you, you keep talking about all this stuff that you guys are, are building. Yes. How often are you releasing updates? About every two weeks. And and how often so so you know i'm i'm going to look at this as the apple model okay so right okay. now they're they're building out ios 12 okay right um, okay and i know this because i'm running ios 12 on my on my my production iphone because i'm uh i'm not very good at this apparently <laughs> <laughs> i like to live dangerously that is so uh, funny <laughs> good so, times so you know they'll they'll they started uh, the beta process where developers and then eventually uh, the public will be able to download and start using it. And I assume mm -hmm. that's kind of what NGP is for you. That's exactly it. Uh, the difference is, is there's additional features inside of the NGP that if you would like to be a part of that beta as well. Uh, so, for example, the workflows, that's one beta group. Then the uh, dash, the uh, workspaces we were talking about, that would be another beta group as well. So, so think of it as the NGP is the key to the new betas as well. So, and does, it's, did, yes. did we talk about like, do you know what NGP stands for? Because I just assume it means next generation product or PSA. Th that's a, that's exactly it. Next generation product. Okay. Um. So, all right. So, if we're looking at this as the Apple model. I mean, are you releasing a big update every year and then little incremental ones? Or are you releasing like, you know, every two weeks? Is it an iOS 12, an iOS 13, you know, where it's where it's 100 new features that, you know what I mean? Like, I do, or, or I is do. it even or is it not even like that? Because what you're doing is you're breaking down all these features and you're saying we don't need to do one big release because we're going to push out what we can incrementally. Right, exactly. Think of it as uh, on the back end development teams, they have, you know, their groups, their teams, their sprints. And when things are done, they push it out. Why do you wait? So, um, I mean, other than for QA and testing, but as long as it functionally works, there's no need to keep it back. Push it out. Right. Give it to the customers. I mean, that's what that's, that's the whole point of the SaaS model. So. And, and I got to I got to say, man, I'll throw them under the bus. That's one thing that I couldn't stand about Autotask is mm -hmm. it took. It, it was, uh, I want to say, six to eight months late for their new ticket UI that they launched. Mm -hmm. And and so, like, I don't even know if they released any updates until 2017 or 2016.1. Wow. When So, which which normally, like, they, they do, like, three or four a year. Their first one wasn't until they did... Uh, Autotask Live. Right, right. So they went from Autotask Live to another Autotask Live, and they didn't release the, the one thing that they demoed at the last Autotask Live. <laughs> wow. Good times. Yeah. So uh, from, from what I'm hearing, you're not going to make people wait on one feature because you want to release all these features at once and blow yep. our minds. You're, you're uh, going... You're, you're going to release things incrementally. So if you have a new ticket UI, you'll release that, even if the new uh, knowledge base UI isn't ready yet. Yep, correct. And, okay. and no one even brought that up. We're actually going to rebuild uh, the end user portal and focus with knowledge base. Uh, cool. so, so that way there could be, say, uh, FAQs available for your end customer directly, because the best customer is the one that doesn't call you, but their questions are answered and they're happy. Okay. Um, I'm just looking through these uh, comments here. So somebody said, oh, let's see here. I'm going to skip the pricing conversation. Okay. It doesn't have to be the same name, but if it's not the same name, you need to type its QuickBooks name into accounting reference name. Okay. So that's okay. So if you have 
IT glue and then IT glue comma ink period, you could uh, you could type in the comma ink period into the accounting reference name. Within that's NFT true. Manager. You're absolutely right. That that's true because the company name and then there's the account reference. Nope, that's right. Absolutely right. Okay. Um, and then it looks like he did a lot of onboarding and training. Okay. Okay. Um, this guy wound up hiring a consultant after, and they actually helped us build out MSP Manager the way they wanted it built out. Okay. Um, once they got things sorted out, the cost seemed like it was worth it. Um, they still use the consultant as needed once in a while when they find something weird or want to change something. Otherwise, MSP manager just kind of rolls along. Awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. He was talking about ConnectWise. <laughs> we'll see what happens when you guys have a different conversation in the comments. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks, Jay and Matt. That was a good chuckle. to <laughs> We're here to talk about solar winds, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Johnny said a toddler can set up MSP Manager. And yeah, I'll say it's... that's because your product is so darn easy. It's so yeah. darn easy to work with, not because it doesn't have much to do. Uh, I see that. Matt, <laughs> Matt really wants a sneak peek at the roadmap. Okay. So um, since you guys were talking about it, Here's a webinar apparently that uh, Greg Lissy has performed. So um, I didn't technically give it to you, but it is on our website. So uh, on-demand webinars, and one of those is called Product Series, and there's a product roadmap. So with that said, I mean, you did technically tell this to us. I and, did. And we know that because it is uh, forever on the Internet because this is streamed live on YouTube, everybody. And Fantastic. Facebook. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> however, it's not like we went and found something secret. That's right? true. You, you yeah. told us something we don't even have to log in to find. That's so, true. So that's good. So for those of you that want to see the roadmap, uh, you can go to solarwindsmsp.com into the resources section, and there is a 2018 product roadmap video. Um, and Johnny said that there's more questions. You're right, Johnny. There are six questions still. Holy cow, Jeff. I've already answered 15. These guys are great today. Yeah. Uh, will MSP Manager create the products in QuickBooks if that product does not exist yet? Or does it just have to be manually mapped? Uh, manually mapped. Okay. Um, so if, if, I, if I create a new product or service in MSP Manager, let's, mm -hmm. call, it a, let's call it a service... And we'll call it uh, we'll we'll call it Steve's ransomware as a service. Okay. If if someone actually buys my ransomware as a service, I I you know I, I create my contract and whatever. I create the invoice. It it tries to push that invoice over to QuickBooks. What happens? Because I haven't gone in and told anything at all to MSP manager or QuickBooks about Steve's ransomware as a service yet. Is that, is that invoice just going to fail? Um, well, remember you said that you made it in MSP manager. So a requirement to create billing is that you'd need to have a service planner item created. And uh, you see under the settings area and uh, da -da, going to integrations and then say QuickBooks. We'll just go with the online just because it's they're the same. Basically, based on what kind of agreement they are. So if you created it, it would maybe it's a flat fee, so maybe it was a flat charge that you would actually set it up so that it automatically had one. Now, if it did not have an automatic or default mapping, yes, it just would not it would not show up uh, in your QuickBooks account and fail. Okay. So everything has to be mapped. There is the answer. Um, yes. And on, on a side note, on a side note for that, I want them to be a bit more granular because not all flat fee amounts are the same. So, um, so that's absolutely something I want them to do. Okay. And I forgot to hit the, uh, start answering button on that. So for those of you that actually clicked the button right now to start answering, you got to scroll back like two minutes. Oops. All right. Which, 
which do these notification oh what do these notifications look like for the people to which it was sent and this was regarding the appointment notifications so i think what he wants to know is what does the notification look like to customers when we schedule one of those appointments and we notify them about it um so under the tip tick under the templates notification templates and this is the uh, thing that we can fully customize using html correct as long as you know how to code html yep exactly and if we don't know how to code html can we say hey jeff you know can I just hire one of your people over there at SolarWinds to customize this for me? Or is that a I dumb idea? It's not a dumb idea. I mean, when you want someone else to do things and they'll accept money for it, no. <laughs> uh, we don't offer that feature or service, but okay. I can't say that it will never happen. I mean, okay. it, if you ask the right guy and he's wanting to do some extra work, then sure. Can, can I, I just want to throw something out there. Sure. Um, themeforest.net. I'm even going to put it in the chat here. So, so for those of you that are like, huh, uh, if you don't do HTML or you're, or you're just not proficient enough to code the whole darn thing yourself, you go to themeforest.net and for like under 50 bucks, you can buy a template and then you could customize that template and slap it into uh, MSP manager. Or you can also use Theme Forest's parent company, Envato, and you can hire somebody to make some custom HTML stuff for you. Um, and I, I would say that that should be under a few hundred bucks, depending on how much customization you need. So I just I just wanted to throw that out there just in case people are like, well, this sounds great, but I don't have time for all that crap. Here's a... Uh... Another one. Oh, actually, sorry. That's for code of company logo notifications. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, it's privacy. Sorry. No problem. All right. I just put a little fun little button on the bottom here. If you guys want to join MSP webinars, become a member and get access to a bunch of cool stuff, feel free to do so. That's that's my pitch. That's my hard sell today, okay? Um, all right. User stats billable to accounting platforms. Johnny, I'm sorry. I'm going to need you to elaborate on that one, brother. Um, user stats billable to accounting platforms. So I think it's asking if it's going to transfer anything other than an invoice to QuickBooks or zero. Um, no, it would, it would only be the invoice and the information added. So for example, uh, inside of a ticket, mm -hmm. it's going to add the time entry detail. So um, for example, inside of the ticket is when I talk slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he said, uh, he did follow up. He showed the technician metrics. Can they be sent over to QuickBooks? And I bet the answer is no. It's the correct. It is no currently. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. Okay. Will there be a workflow available such as if X client send to Y queue? So can you assign a queue based on the client? I don't see why not. That that would absolutely make sense to me because at that point, yeah, you could create a queue and break it down. I'm, I'm going to say yes. It's not, I haven't even technically seen it yet, but uh, at that point is where you could have, say, even the internal uh, technician that could own that queue. So therefore, all tickets go there so that they could manage it. Okay. And um, if, if you could just show us, look for it real quick and make me feel good about myself yeah. and doing my there job, right? Ass assign Q <laughs> right there. Okay. So, yeah, assign so condition Q. if client equals X, then action Q equals Y. Assign yep. Q to Y. 
customer okay. name contains. Yep. And then you just uh, assign Q. Yeah. That's that, perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. And I assume you can do multiple actions. So we could say, I want you to assign this queue. I want you to set this priority, um, yes. so on and so forth. And Ben, I don't know if you saw earlier, uh, if this is the Ben I'm thinking of, this might not actually matter to you, but re- you know, right now anyway. But as you grow, if if you hire a bunch of people, can you show us that, that uh, user skills page again? Because that is cool, man. I yeah, guess that's, that's something I've never seen in another RMM tool. And I, I say kudos to you guys for this. So basically, you. basically this says um, you, you kind of grade or score people based on what they're capable of doing. Yep. Correct. Um, or, or even, or even what you want them to be doing. Like you might not want your tier three guy doing, have you turned it off and back on? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Yeah, basically, so, the C- basically your uh, your CCNA guy doesn't need to be working with the Facebook. It's slow at lunch today. <laughs> okay, I just had two guys tell me ConnectWise has it, and then someone else said Autotask has this as well. But is it actually is it actually routing the tickets based on this information? Nobody's ever shown this feature off to me. I mean, it's never been like a hey, let's show people this. Uh, right. right. When, when I've looked at those other PSAs and to be fair, they might not have cared to show it to me because I'm just one guy. Um, okay. So, so they both say it can. So never mind. Not, no more kudos. This is, <laughs> this is just, you know, par, par for the course. Yeah. This never is mind. just, a, I take yeah. it all back. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Um, and, and Zach said skill-based routing gets big and complicated, complicated at scale. So, um all right so going back to Ben's original question uh can any RMM tool like Kaseya send an email to MSP manager to create a ticket and I know the answer to this because yeah. the answer is yes because you Email's have the ability to to accept tickets and you could so unfortunately you know I know Ben is using Kaseya um and I know you're going to frown at this but he's got a really fantastic deal and I mean, you guys are welcome to try and beat it, okay? I'll, I'll sure. tell you that. Um, so, and we don't have to talk about that. That's fine. So, with with that said, though, oh, okay, we're good. Uh, with that said, um, you can have it. So, Kaseya emails MSP manager creates the ticket, and yep. you can go into those workflow rules, and you could. Uh, it's going to take a lot of work, but you could create a rule for like every customer that says, you know, if subject contains Chase Bank, then assign customer, right? Yes. Uh, uh, I guess I didn't see that. So we should probably confirm assign customer is one of those workflow rules somehow or, or some type of rule. Because if it's always coming from, you know, no reply at tailoritgroup.com, you know what I mean? I do. I do. Um, it may be a part of the phase two because technically this is all coming from the RM dashboard first. Gotcha. But I'm I'm pretty confident that that would be a, an option. Um, it's the it's the action part that I'm worried about. So no, right now it can only set priority, assign tech, service plan. Con- okay, so contact. Um. The word so the term contact is an end user's customer, or excuse me, an employee of a customer you support. So, how does that? I don't see like a. I don't see an option for that. Like I see assign contact, but it doesn't say what contact to assign. My guess. Oh, okay. Oh, that's weird. My guess is that this is a part of the beta. Oh, oh here we go. No. Hmm. Yeah, this is. Oh, there you go. Enter contact email address right there. Okay. So you could. Uh... Hmm. That would be a, a pain in the butt. And I think I think 
Jeff's official answer, Ben, is uh, you can do it, but you're better off switching to MSP RMM or N Central. No, maybe. <laughs> I'm good. I'm, that's the easy answer. Yes, that, that is the easy answer. It can be done, but it, you know, it would take a lot of work to to set up so that it's actually assigning these tickets. Now, if you have a bunch of tickets being created that are like, uh, if they come from Kaseya, automatically assign it to my company, and then can I go into a ticket and change the company? Yeah, I mean. At that or, point, or could I have Kaseya make ticket requests like you showed off earlier? And then from that ticket request, would it actually give me the option to quickly assign that to a, a customer and a contact? Yeah. Well, the, well, the thing is, is that if it's a request, you can go in and create ticket. And uh -huh. then at that point, now you've got a ticket that you just hit save and now I have a ticket. So, yeah. And then I could, go could in. and then I have to go in. So that, that would probably be the easiest just because at least it's got all the information there. And now all you got to do is, you know, have it create as a ticket request. That way it's not affecting your SLAs. And then you can come into the request and, you know, set these up as tickets for you. And a ticket request, you can have that notify you, correct? Correct. A ticket request comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would come back to that, the notification area of who needs to be notified. So, correct. Ben, you're using um, a repair shopper right now, if I recall correctly. Okay. And see, guys, this this is what it means to be a member of MSP Webinars. I get to know you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> in, in the creepiest way possible. Uh, <laughs> Johnny, I'm with you on that one, buddy. <laughs> oh, ben, that's a really good shirt on you right now, by the way. <laughs> how does he know uh so <laughs> so uh repair shopper is i'm just gonna keep it 100 repair shop is ugly as sin uh i couldn't stand <laughs> using it however it does have some cool features in it like you can do the the credit card charges right through the psa or I don't know if I'd call it a PSA. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, sure. Some of these features. But I think that in the long run, something like this is going to serve an MSP better, especially if you're releasing new features every two weeks. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you. It, it It may be okay right now, but they're absolutely putting crazy amounts of development efforts into it. Even if you don't aren't ready, just keep an eye on it. That's all I'd say. Just keep an eye on the product. So, all right. I see a bunch of questions on um, YouTube here. Is there a roadmap on the website? The answer is yes-ish. Um, I'm going to scroll and I'm going to find that video URL. And I'm going to paste this into, um, into YouTube so that way he can have access to that. Okay. Uh, one thing I love about ConnectWise, they have a roadmap clearly laid out on the site. The roadmap is a single statement that's not really desirable compared to ConnectWise that's minuscule. Okay. So, Mr. Atari911, you're just a mean person. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he makes he makes a fair point. You know, if, if you're comparing MSP Manager to ConnectWise, it's, it, it feels like you're comparing David to Goliath. And, sure. um, I'm not going to say which one Goliath is because that <laughs> it's pretty obvious. It's a really confusing statement when you think of it. <laughs> totally. Well, we have to start somewhere. I can tell you that, and yes. uh, it will it will definitely get better. Now I remember seeing capture at oh what was it? It might have been around three years ago. Right, right when I right around when I saw them at or not them, but I saw the other guys that Kaseya bought. Uh like KMS or yeah, and I don't remember what KMS used to be. Mm. It started with a letter. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so 
Um, I, I met I met the guys from the one that was at Kaseya that turned into Kaseya BMS. And um, back before Kaseya bought them, it was actually my wife and I at ASCII. And my wife got a really weird vibe from the guy. Not like not like he's trying to hit on her. Like, right. She just didn't have that warm, fuzzy. I think we should sign up with these guys kind of feeling. And I really? always felt like their product was mm-hmm. identical to the capture product back then. And what what it has turned into, you know, when I look at NGP versus BMS, and I'm sorry, I just hit my microphone. Uh, NGP versus BMS, they're like two completely different animals now. Um, right. So, so let me go over a couple things that I noticed with BMS that makes me want to stab people primarily developers for bms okay so can i bulk create all of my invoices on the first you're asking me that yes yes so if we went to the billing area I think my wife hears the ice cream truck and she's running around the house looking for money that I'm just going to throw over to her. And uh, (laughs) I, I just tossed an envelope filled with money at my wife. That's, that's how I roll guys. Good times. (laughs) Oh, this Um, is awesome. Oh, that's good. I know guys. I assure you it's all singles. (laughs) (laughs) What's up? I can't hear her anyway. Um, all right. So so I can create all the invoices at once. Now, with BMS, it was um, I approve the contracts, and I verify that uh, all of these different items are correct. They're the right number. They're the right price. So I approve them. And then I look and I see, all right, there's these 50 invoices I got to, I got to email out. So now mm-hmm. I got to approve the invoice. After and, you've already uh, approved. Uh, yeah. Even though I already approved the items, now I have to approve the invoice and I have to create the invoice. And then I go to a third window and my invoices that I just created are actually created. They're ready to be created. And what I would have to do is I would have to click on each individual invoice and then click create or build or something like that. And then it would, um, what would it do? How would it do it? And then I would have to choose my template for the invoice. And from, from there, it would then let me synchronize that one invoice to QuickBooks Online. And then I would have to repeat that 49 more times for the other, you know, rest of the 50 invoices. That's painful. It, it was painful, which is why I only did invoicing out of BMS twice. <laughs> All right. So um, apparently mine timed out. So I'm just doing it in a different browser for this one. No problem. So, you know, I, I just, you know, I talk about this stuff because I want people to understand like, There are pain points beyond, is the ticket interface pretty? Have you been looking for a way to stay focused on your goals and grow your MSP? Accountability groups from Rocket MSP can help. We offer weekly accountability sessions that meet online with a group of your peers. Your success begins with accountability. Go to www.rocketmsp.io to join your accountability group today.